it's amazing how fast we can go from open roads to city riding. And personally, I wouldn't do it on any other bike apart from the Kawasaki Vulcan. I might be slightly biased. And one thing that might stand out with the Vulcan is... I've got an LED bulb in there because the standard one's a little bit crap. I've got a number of cameras on it, and it looks better from this side. Especially when you have the aero exhaust on. It's a beautiful bike. Wonderful to ride. Nice and smooth, nice and easy. So let's see how it is. Well, I know how it is because I've been riding it for the last year. And uh, it's pretty good. Now, I have mentioned in one of my previous videos, if you're not a regular here, hi, that um, I am not in a position to give a review on this bike because A, I just don't quite know how to, and B, well, I just, I don't think I can do it justice. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, I just don't think I can do a good enough job of it. So, here I am. I will give you my impressions, I will give you my thoughts maybe some of my opinions as well and the first thing I'm going to do is just list off a couple of negatives so I've mentioned that the standard bulb that you get in the headlight is a little bit lacking and quite frankly it is so I popped onto YouTube found a lovely man Cockney Biker who did a video on how to actually change it to a much brighter LED bulb but this one has been absolutely spanking for me so far I still get the odd flash from people thinking that my light is on full beam or maybe that my lights on all the time but you know what it happens now another thing that gets me is the stock seat that comes with this bike now you do get an ergo fit solution so I was giving way no one coming fantastic I don't die today all right there is an ergo fit thing on this which means that if you're a shorter rider you can get the pegs moved towards you you can get the handlebars moved towards you and you can also have the seat move forward. It pushes you further towards the tank of the bike, meaning it also pushes you towards the controls, and if need be, you can also have the uh, also yeah. you can also have the controls taken towards you, brought to you. As you can see, I'm not good with words. Now, although there are three different seats available, the standard, the long reach, and the short reach, you can guess which one does which. The standard seat, which I'm currently running, as well as the standard setup, it's not entirely comfortable. Now, I could quite happily spend an hour or two on this bike, but after about an hour, let's say, it's uh, it's going to get a little bit uncomfortable. Now, there are upholsterers around which will do sheepskin covers for your lovely buttocks, and they will also do a whole seat, probably. So, if you're into the whole riding for hours on end kind of ordeal then I would suggest that uh, you get one made now one of the good things I do like about this bike if you need to get away from someone that's hanging up your ass you can do so although if someone's hanging up your ass you're probably best just like letting them go because uh, we don't want one of those drivers but if you do see yourself in a pickle or if you need to uh, get off a set of lights rather quickly or a roundabout then you can do so now with speed comes the handling and uh, let me assure you this bike is no joke when it comes to handling cruises on the most part can be a little bit daunting when it comes to throwing them around a corner but when you have lovely bends like this this bike just takes them you can throw this into a corner, it will spit you back out again, no worries, no problems. It's a lot of fun, it's so much fun. Now one thing I'm going to do with this, fourth gear, 30 mile an hour. You can hear the engine's a little bit, uh, a little bit low at the moment, but... The noise, my gosh. Which brings me on to the next thing. The standard or the stock exhaust that comes with this bike is very quiet. Now if you live in an urban area, that's fantastic because no one's going to hear you. If you live in an urban area, that's not so fantastic because no one's going to hear you. 
And if you are a believer in the loud pipes say la uh, lives thing, get my words out again in a minute, then hang goes up. Then yes, uh, it would probably be worth upgrading the stock exhaust on this. And by upgrading, I don't necessarily mean you just buy a whole new one like I did, because well, this one came free with the bike, so shh. this uh, the stock exhaust available on this bike is an absolute winner and all it takes is drilling a few holes into it who knew now while i don't recommend drilling holes into things without the prior knowledge to doing so i would recommend you go on the kawasaki vulcan s riders group on facebook and a lad called devin actually made a well a pretty in-depth guide on how to basically drill holes in your exhaust to make it sound louder and he's also got some options in there as well you plug it up with screws and such like that you can search the group for oem exhaust modification or something like that and you'll see the post there from the lad who's gone through all this trouble to see what the options are so if i could sum up this bike in one phrase i suppose it'll be it gets the job done because everything on it isn't bad oh hello it's like this view it's beautiful to look at it's great to explore, it's great to ride around. It's nice. Not just for riding, but also to look at and ride and look at and look at and ride and, well, you, <laughs> you can see why I don't do reviews now, don't you? <laughs> but, uh, well, wow. So the fuel tank, quite sizable. I think it's uh, 11 liters. I should really look into this stuff before I start talking about it, shouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> whoops. But yeah, I think it's around 11 litres. If it's not, then I'll edit the video there just to say what it is. And this thing has very decent miles per gallon, or however you measure your fuel consumption. It will get you very far. Now, another little thing I like about this bike, I suppose from moving up to a, from a 125, which didn't really have any sort of display on it, to this, is the display on this is absolutely spanking it lights up really well in the evenings but also the fuel gauge on it is pretty damn good it's a little bit iffy at sometimes just in my personal experience we oh yeah i can see why this is a 30 mile an hour oh sharp bend ahoy but also if i have a look into the dash there if you can see that you can see there's a few little icons, and you can probably guess the uh, the majority of those icons, but there's a little one there in the top left which says ECO, ECO, and that shows you whether you're riding the bike in an economically safe, well, an economical fashion. So, how's your fuel consumption, how's your riding, if you're just going to absolutely blast the throttle around every corner, every road and get the most out of it straight up to the speed limit then back down again or if you're one of those people who likes to break the speed limit then that's fine you know you, you can do that if you want that's uh, your decision not mine I don't endorse that kind of uh, that kind of trouble but uh, yeah. yes if you ride in a decent manner I say decent that eco sign would be up all the time and that would give you a damn good idea that you are riding in a very fuel efficient manner someone didn't have their coffee this morning can you tell and well what else can i say about this bike i took a passenger on this for the first time i've had jelly bean here for the best part of a year and the first time i took a passenger was yesterday uh, time of recording anyway and i have to say this bike handles a passenger really well and I went to a bike show recently where they had this bike set up in a, oh hello, uh, a touring configuration. So a big Kawasaki screen on the front, a backrest for your passenger, uh, the saddlebags as well. The bike looks spanking even in a touring mode. And I sat on the back with a friend on the front, I sat on the front with a friend on the back. And I'll tell you what, the only difference I really felt was just the sheer weight of the bike. Or the sheer weight of having a, a lump of meat on the back of your bike anyway. So taking that experience to having someone on the bike for the first time I basically thought right well I've basically got a moving sack of meat on the back so what's that going to do to the bike well it's obviously going to make it heavier so 
treat the bike as one which is twice as heavy. Now, I haven't ridden the bike which is twice as heavy as Jelly Bean here. <laughs> so you can imagine how that went. However, no crashes, no skids, no bad experiences, just my shoddy gear changes every now and then. But uh, apart from that, we had a lot of fun and it got the job done. It was spanking to have a passenger on this bike. So if you do plan on buying this for yourself to take someone with you somewhere, or if you simply just want to ride it yourself, it's great. It's fantastic. One people, two people, maybe not more than two. That'd be, uh, that'd be safe, wouldn't it? And you're absolutely on your way. It's fantastic. Now, one thing this bike won't do is make you look like a cock. Now, subtle references aside, is that subtle? I don't know. <laughs> oh dear. Bad jokes. This, uh, this bike would definitely have you smiling a lot. And it's not a bike that can make anyone look silly. Well, there's a few brands out there that have a certain persona to them. The, the leather jackets, the the big beards, the short beards, the hipster thing, the not hipster thing, you know. The Kawasaki Vulcan S, in my opinion, I've got friends from all walks of life, from all kinds of countries, and thank you, who just, uh, just ride the bike. They can throw on any old gear, as long as it's not like a cap clown costume or something like that. And, uh, you know, the, the bike doesn't make them look foolish, and they don't make the bike look foolish in the slightest. So if you're a large person, don't worry about it. If you're a skinny person, don't worry about it. The main thing is the bike looks good, feels good, acts good, reacts good, and travels good as well. I could probably say a better word than good, but I'll, like I said, I'm not professional on this subject, so if you're looking for a really in-depth review, there's plenty of those on YouTube. I just give my impressions. And uh, while it's not as smooth as a Triumph, the throttle is a little bit jerky at times. It's pretty damn good though. If you have a really solid, oh hello, nice little KTM there. If you have a solid right hand, and for a lot of you guys out there, <laughs> hey, um, then you, you'll be able to control this clutch pretty well. And also the, uh, the throttle at the same time. Now if I was to give you an example, I would have to do some really low speeds, but there's so little movement in that, so little, and you can you can basically see and you can hear the bikes just going. Eh, 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 eh. There's there's very little, you know, even that little bump there, my throttle, my hand slips off the throttle just a little bit, and it takes me off all the power. So when you're doing slower speeds like I am now, and you basically don't have a lot in your right hand, twist wise then yeah you're gonna find that the bike does want to spit you back and forth every now and then give you a bit of a kangaroo ordeal but uh it's all right you can get a power commander which i believe sorts that out good and proper it balances out the power you can probably also get this adjusters as well at the same time but um ah well So all in all, what can I say about the uh, the Vulcan S, my Ickle Jelly Bean here? Well, she's an absolute keeper, let me tell you that. Uh, unless you are thirsting after a bike which offers you tremendous amounts of power, like a, a 1000cc engine, then yeah, you're going to be maybe left out a little bit there. But what this bike does offer is an incredibly light frame, so it's easy to move around compared to some cruisers anyway. Well, there's some big boys out there. But also, it's very easy to stop, it's very easy to balance. You're most welcome, sir. No, if you need to do these sort of manoeuvres, avoid sandwiches in the road, then you can do. Even if your confidence is very low, this is an amazing learner bike. If you're moving up from a smaller bike and you want something a bit more oomph, then my gosh, this will sort you out something fierce, in the best way. You've got the speed to get away from people, to get around the corners, you've got the handling, you've got the fuel efficiency of the engine matched with the consumption, with the consumption? With the, uh, the storage of the fuel tank as well. The 
wonderful balance, the lightweightness of it, everything just screams fantastic for beginners or fantastic for newer riders. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say have a Vulcan S as your first bike ever because if you're living in the UK, then there are restrictions to your license and such. Now, my friend Cockney, his daughter, uh, I'm not sure if she rode a bike prior, but she has a Vulcan S. Oops. Don't leave your indicators on as well, that's bad. Uh, and yeah, as far as I know, she's just, you know, swung a leg over the Vulcan S, just started riding that, and she's absolutely smashed it. She loves the bike. And who can blame her? It's a wonderful thing. And especially on lovely spring days like this, you know, we've just come out of winter. Spring has come around. You're feeling like the heat for the first time in a while. Blue skies. The birds are well out in force today. The birds are prey as well. And, you know, it's, it's just such a nice bit of scenery. Now, you can get in a car and you can drive around, take these bends and have a bit of fun, get out into the countryside like this, but ideally if there's a bike that I would want to do it on it would be the Vulcan S hands down. Now I wouldn't be against having a Vulcan S with a 1000cc engine. A Kawasaki if you're watching this maybe you should get on that but uh, with the Vulcan S that we have at the moment it's so well rounded I can't complain about it really. I'm genuinely so happy with this bike so overwhelmed that it's been so reliable so fantastic to ride and wonderful it's treated me well and i treat it well back well if there's anything to say about motorcycles you should treat them well and they, they should hopefully uh, do that in return because if there's one thing this bike can do it's a lot of things for a lot of riders and i've got i've got friends who ride sports bikes and they sit on this and they're like wow that is comfortable that is fast that is agile, that is nimble, and you know what, seeing the smiles on their faces when they look at a cruiser and they're thinking, ah, what is that, that's, that's going to handle like a tank, isn't it? Oh no. It might handle like a tank compared to some of the bikes that they've been riding, but let me assure you, this is no pushover. While you might be encouraged to give this the beans around the corners and up and down the country lanes, I must honestly say, do not, do not treat this bike like a sports bike. I mean, you can but if you come off around a corner or if you throw yourself off the bike and you get hurt or if you get killed I'm not to blame, that's all you in short, I'm not responsible for your actions and uh, well, I'd like to keep it that way because I know there's a lot of silly people out there ah, dear so, um, yeah that's all I've got for this so that's my impressions, happy days and uh, I hope you found this useful if there's any questions any additional questions you have about the bike then please just leave them down in the comments below i will probably get back to you at some point and if not well you can jump on the kawasaki vulcan s group on facebook any questions you can ask the guys on there there is so many people from all walks of life in that group and if there isn't someone there who can help you i would be amazed so have yourselves a good one enjoy and uh well it's half an hour